Hello there. Welcome back to the Blue Hines Garage. Uh, well, we're still here working on Time Machine. Obviously got a long way to go on that. Um, as you saw in the last video, we have relocated the motor mounts. So they're now, they're tacked in again, but they're in their final position. We uh, ended up moving the motor forward to gain that clearance there. This is the head, the head, heads are staggered on these motors. So this was the one furthest back. That with the back of the head there was almost touching the firewall. So we moved it ahead. What you're looking at there is roughly a 5 8 inch clearance. I don't think it had an eighth of an inch before. Uh, and uh, we actually lowered the motor a bit. The back of the, tra the transmission was touching the bottom of the transmission tunnel. The, the area on top of the transmission where the linkage uh, assembly bolts on was actually touching the transmission tunnel. So we lowered the whole thing down, I'm going to say roughly a half an inch. And that gave us what, we, what you see right here. We have like almost no clearance on the um, oil pan to the front cross member, you see. So what the next plan is, what we're going to do next um, is two things. A little gnat flying around here. Uh, it's two things. We're going to create a recess here in the, in the front cross member. Going to basically cut it here and here and then across the front so that and then go down to the low spot here the, there will be a flat at that level coming forward to you see that black line right there coming forward to that line going straight across uh, so that way, hopefully, we're gonna uh, we're once we we're gonna pull the motor. Obviously, we've got some uh, locations now, so we can pull the motor and do the work. Uh, while the motor's out, we're gonna drop the pan and see how far down the pan needs to come to clear the internals. These things have a long skirt on the block, so I'm not sure there's a whole bunch hanging down. Uh, you know, crank rods, whatever, hanging down below the block, the skirt of the block. Well, we're going to find that out once it's apart. So what we're going to end up with there probably is maybe an inch clearance below the pan. And the second thing that we're doing next is clutch linkage, uh, which you can't hardly see back. You can see the clutch fork back there. And you see this hole right here is where the rod coming out of the off the clutch pedal comes down and, and hits the linkage. I know we can go with a hydraulic clutch. Scott would prefer to go with mechanical linkage rather than the hydraulic. So we're gonna to attempt to build some linkage before we give up and go to the hydraulic assembly. So uh, obviously, um, there's a couple of things we need to do uh, on the block. There's a, let me see if I can show you that. I don't know if I can dial this into that spot. Yeah. You see that spot on the block right there? There's a hole and there's a shiny spot above it right in the center of the screen there. There's a kind of a bulge that's cast into the casting. We're going to try and relieve that, cut it back so it kind of lines up with the edge of the block, the angle edge of the block, because there needs to be a bracket coming off of the bell housing. Two bolts on the back of the bell housing and then making a 90 degree turn and heading forward to uh, uh, create a pivot for the clutch linkage, the cross shaft in the clutch linkage. So first thing we need to do when we get the motor out is cut that casting. I believe that we're hoping. This is a mock-up block, so we can, we can, um, what's the word? Not worry about ruining something. Like I said, this block is mostly for positioning. I don't think he's going to use it. He don't think he's going to use it for a permanent motor. 
So we're going to try and cut that casting, thinking that it's solid. That bump out on there is solid. It looks like it's kind of a support uh, uh, place or something. Maybe when they stack the motors or whatever. I don't know. But at any rate, we're going to try and uh, do that and see if we can create some clearance. Because we got to start playing with things like this. See, this is the cross shaft. The black part is the factory cross shaft. And the other piece is what we're going to use. You see how thick that is. It is what we're going to use to probably to build a cross shaft, our own. And this is the factory bracket that goes, it goes like this from the back of the motor. On the, on the small blocks, there's two bolt uh, uh, bosses cast into the cast iron that this bracket bolts to. The pivot, this piece, bolts on right there. And the cross shaft sits there like this, you know. Sits there on this piece like this. Obviously with the pivot in here and that's how this this operates this operates the clutch when you push the pedal so that's what we're trying to recreate on the LS motor between the 57 chassis and the LS motor so that's our next step all right I'm long-winded but I think I've explained it well enough so you can understand what we're trying to do next so next step is to pull the motor and then I'll probably show you some of the Steps on making the recess and building the linkage. We'll put the motor back in once we get the recess built in the firewall, in the uh, cross member, and then start building the linkage later. Okay, so here's the layout for that uh, notch in the cross member. Yeah, what we're using, what he's using, what do you call that, a laser line level? A line level, yeah. Because it makes lines. And it makes them nice and straight. On curvy stuff, which is difficult to do. That's going to be a pretty good sized notch, as you can see. You see the lines there? Yeah, it's a little, <clears throat> there's, uh, there's definitely some pucker factor here. <laughs> yeah. But if you can wreck it, you can fix it. That's true. Well, that's a neat thing about steel. Just don't get the time. Can't do that with a piece of wood. Once it's cut, it's pretty much cut. Now, I don't particularly believe in all the miracle glues. So that's what we're going to end up, he's going to end, we're going to end up with, and it goes down. Do you, you don't have the bottom marked yet. No, i got to prop the laser up. You see where that slope is. That's probably three quarters to an inch. That's going to get removed on the low section, the bottom of the curve there. And it'll go straight across at that level. So anyway, here we are. Almost forgot. While the motor and transmission were in, uh, Scott marked the locations of the the shifter section of the transmission. That transmission gives you three possible locations to mount the shifter. Uh, so he marked the extreme corners of that set that section, and then from that got a layout where the position he's going to use, and that's what that big hole in the floor is now.
While Scott's working on the cross-member recess, I'm dialing in the clutch linkage arms on the spline shaft to the correct angles. Here's the factory setup as a pattern. Using a degree finder here to determine the relationship between the pedal arm and the linkage arm. Looks like roughly 45 degrees. So this is what this looks like. It's going to look like. You can see that with that plate, the full four inch plate is in there on the two sides. I don't know if you can tell that or not. And then across the bottom, you see it's notched around this reinforced piece that's been put in there. When this frame was in Scott's garage, this chassis was in Scott's garage, he had it on a rotisserie and he had it upside down and he replaced the bottom piece of this cross member because it was all caved in by people using a jack underneath it. Uh, so like I said, he replaced it with a heavier piece. You see the, I, it probably either 3 16 or quarter. I think 3 16 3 uh, And to ensure that it would never cave in again, he put that gusset piece across the middle so that if you do jack up from the center, it's going against that gusset piece. Well, now that gusset piece is going to actually tie into this, to this vertical that creates the recess, which is going to make this box extremely strong. It's, you're still going to have the box, the original box, and then you're going to have this plate on the inside of the box, which acts like a gusset, in the, in, an internal gusset in the box. It's going to be really strong, even though he's taking some of it out, or, you know, removing some of it. Anyway. Uh, looking at this, I think it's going to be way stronger than it was originally. Okay, well, that's where we ended up for today. It is uh, 3.30. And we started working on this at 11, so four hours into this. That's where we ended up. You see this, the two side pieces are made. They're not tacked in yet or welded or anything like that, but they are fitted in. They're sitting in the opening, half in and half out. <clears throat> the bottom plate is tacked in, and you see the three holes for the rosettes that we countersunk, so it makes kind of a lot of mushroom on the top. Uh, the vertical plate is welded at the top. He's gonna add a little more material there and so he can radius that corner do that tomorrow and here we are so this will be finished tomorrow um, and then the next thing is um, that plate for the clutch pivot that goes on the bell housing that needs to bolt to the bell housing which gonna go let me get some more light on this area sorry about that going to go right there you see he cut that with a sawzall remember it was this was straight down square right here so now it angles to match the angle where are we here it angles to match the angle of the block so that the idea is to make a plate that goes on the back side of the bell house. We're probably going to have to doctor this piece too. Make a plate that bolts to these two bolts. This one and this one. Depending on how we make the plate, maybe use that one too. I'm not sure. I hadn't thought about that. We were discussing this and I hadn't thought about that. So that might be an option. Rather than modify this piece, just use make a tab a tab and then on the flat use that so you would have three areas where it fastened i think that would be adequate and then it comes forward and there's the pivot going to be here somewhere for the cross shaft the clutch cross shaft for the linkage bell crank excuse me cross shaft bell crank whatever is the same thing so anyway i think that's the next once the recess in the uh, cross member is done this is the next project and then the motor can go back in the car and we can check and see if that came out in the right place in the floor. 
So anyway, that's today's progress. See ya. Okay, well, um, it's Saturday morning again, uh, a week since we started this last step, I think, and I'm happy to say this got finished. That's what it looks like. There is your recess. Uh, so, like I said, essentially it took a week. We um, st started cutting into it, I believe it was last Saturday. If you recall the first segment, um, we got the vertical plate in. And I think the bottom plate was tacked in. And then after that, it was like, you know, build up and radius all the edges, you know, smooth contour whatever all the edges because you see the shapes there there's tons of them uh so this and it was like saturday i think sunday again and then uh, two or three afternoon sessions you know after work to complete this so quite a little project it took more time than than either of us thought it was going to take we knew it wasn't going to be easy or quick but didn't think it would take that long so anyway this step is done uh, and um, started actually making that um, bracket that's going to go on the motor. Figured that we would get the bracket at least made and so we could, you know, um, verify the fit on the motor while it's sitting here instead of in the car. Um, I don't know where the piece ended up. I bought this piece of six inch flat material during the week um, and I know he's cut a piece off of it and uh, used the pattern to identify the tabs to shape the tabs and all that stuff uh, and that and drill some holes but I don't know where the piece ended up so that's it for now in the meantime, I've been trying to build a gate. Scott has a dog, um, a young, not a pup, but a younger dog right now. And I've got a vegetable garden, as you know, up there. Uh, so right now he's not bringing the dog over because we can't keep the dog out of the vegetable garden. So what I'm doing is building a gate that's going to go in front of these stairs, the, the bigger set of stairs here. So at this point, you see what I've gotten done is the two side pieces. This, this is a dry stack block wall like the one that's over here. Don't know if you can see this at all through there. There's a dry stack wall there that I built geez, 30 years ago. And it's covered, you see this section of it is covered with this vine. But at any rate, I've put the side piece here. This is where the hinge, this is gonna be the hinge side of the gate. And I'm gonna build it out of one inch square tubing, metal tubings, keep it as light as possible. And then cover it with that same hardware cloth that you see there. Uh, so like I said, I've been doing the two side pieces well, Scott comes over or whatever during the day and you know whatever time I have I haven't been doing anything on the car during the week he's been finishing that recess that um, recess in the in the um, cross member so while he's been doing that I've been building these two side pieces you see I got them all put together there are a number of pieces all joined together and, and then uh, spackled because it was used material uh, to smooth it out I see I still got a couple of patches to uh, do here where I put the fasteners and then paint them so like I said I'm going to today I'm going to try and get the the frame of the gate built and um, all clamped together so Scott can weld it and then once I've got a frame then I'll put the wire on it paint it and put the wire on it so anyway that's what's been going on this week later
Thanks for watching. As always, bye.